is the chief executive officer at Maritime Media. Welcome to the program. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> Pleasure meeting you. Pleasure, likewise. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, they could, we were caught. Uh, <laughs> when you were saying something but thank you very much i appreciate that compliment you're welcome now let's um talk about of course the, the before the break i did say that we're going to be looking at the maritime sector and uh, during my intro uh, i did say that the maritime industry or the maritime sector in any country plays a very prominent uh, role in fact if a country also wants to industrialize it must take the maritime sector seriously yeah. uh, we do know that nigeria is also um on the coastlines of, I think, the Gulf of Guinea and the Bight of Benin, sure. I if I'm not uh, mistaken. Now, uh, as an expert for over 30 years in that sector, uh, in fact, you were the shipping editor, isn't it? The Concord. Yes. The Defunct Concord. The Defunct Concord, yes. National Concord. Yes. You were the shipping editor. And you also have a magazine that follows the maritime sector. Closely, yeah. Cl closely. So you are an expert in that sector. Um, I would start by asking you that you should describe the journey of Nigeria's maritime sector for me in one sentence, not one word, in one sentence so far. Just describe it in one sentence for those that perhaps do not even understand what the sector is, at least in the last few years. Mm, the journey has been a uh, touchless one. Uh, of course, uh, what we have today as a maritime, when we say maritime, we are talking about the MPA and the Massa Customs. Mm -hmm. It used to be what we have, the old marine, which metamorphosed into inland waterways, into the, uh, the Navy, mm -hmm. and, uh, and of course, uh, uh, the Nigerian Post Authority. The Massa, of course, is a recent creation of uh, government. government. And so, yeah. um, it's not been an easy one, <coughs> because uh, we have had so many policies of assaults, and that is the bane of this industry. But for any country which uh, neglects its transport sector, because goods and services will have to move from one point to the other, and the price we are paying today as a country is because of uh, the neglect of this sector, both in terms of uh, policies of assault and uh, budgetary allocation over the years. Mm. What is the weakest link? What's the weakest link in the sector? Yeah, because, the because it has <coughs> a lot of tentacles. Yes, the weakest yeah. link we have right now in the sector is, let's start from 2015 when this administration came into power. What we had was a situation where non-professionals were ma made to head these agencies of government. For instance, at the MPA, you had an Adiza. We have the board. The board are made of politicians. It's allowed. So, but how now do you have a situation where the entire executive management in MPA, we have three executive directors, uh, executive director of finance, the one in charge of uh, operations, and the one in charge of marine and technical services, and then the MD are all green horns. And so they don't have any history of what is happening. So if you go to, to, go to Papa, for instance, that is the challenge we have. And then, as if that was not enough, we had an Adiza who shut down the zonal structure. The zonal structure was to uh, act like a buffer so that you don't bring everything to, to Lagos. We had a GM in Port Harcourt before, one that uh, uh, Mohamed Goje, his own was to go around, get uh, clients to patronize the ports of Calabar, ports of uh, Wari and the post of Onea and Port Harcourt. But this woman came, sorry, uh, Balas man came and shut down the zonal structure. And so that means that the pressure is so much in Lagos. Whereas people are thinking about how to make, to ease the traffic in Lagos. And so these are the challenges we have. Then look at the custom, Nigerian custom service. It's also another, you know, uh, pity state. We have a situation where when this government came into power, what they did was to bring a retired colonel. Mr. President meant well. I mean, I'm not going to challenge him because of the stories about the massive corruption that was going on in that agency when this administration came into office. And so, but what we are saying is that we have people, professionals. It's a professional organization. It's not the kind of job that you get anybody. Because, for instance, let me give this analogy. If you keep uh, Amid Ali 
on top of a 20-story building for 20 years, he will see what is happening in the service because he does not know what is what the technicalities about the Nigerian custom service. And so these are the challenges we have. Morale is low. And so we are looking at a situation where a new government is coming in. When I say new government, in the next couple of months, I'm sure there will be... A couple of months or weeks. Uh, weeks. Because uh, 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 so, so, so tomorrow is so, midday. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so we begin to right the wrongs. The same thing with the, 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 the Nimasa. In the case of Nimasa, we have a Dakuku who was lucky to have a mix of old and new. When we say old and new, we have some, some of the executive directors in the Nimasa who were from the system, and so it was easy for him to really sail through. But it's not been easy for the sector. Then you go to Niwa, National Inland Water Waterways Authority. You brought in a medical doctor. For God's sake, we are professionals in the National Inland Water that could run the, 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 the Niwa. So these are the things that we are saying that, look, in this new dispensation that is coming, Mr. President should do the right thing by putting the square pegs in square holes. At the Maritime Academy Oron, we have a retired naval officer. That one for us is a square peg in a square hole. A retired Commodore Fedua is doing a fantastic job at the Maritime Academy. The Minister of Transportation has never visited there for four years that since he became minister. And so we are saying, ah, if that is the bedrock of the maritime industry, how come you... For four years, you were Minister of Transport. You never thought it deemed the, the right to visit the Maritime Academy of Nigeria. Or on. Not to talk of a situation where two rectors have died in succession during your tenure. And so we are saying that, look, people who have capacity should be put in places so that this industry can move forward. We have mm. some great countries in the world that are driven by the maritime sector. We, if you look at the 10 big shipping nations in the world, we are looking at Greece, Japan, China, US, Singapore, Norway, Germany, UK, UK Denmark, yeah. and uh, Korea. These are great shipping countries. And then we have, you know, the vessel capacity. Now, the Masa, there's a, there's a vessel, uh, cabotage vessel financing fund was created almost 20 years ago. The Masa has refused to dispose that money. How do you call it? Is that the official for one? Because this money is monies collected by ship owners for us to build capacity and then you have failed to dispose okay you you said quite a lot but but let me try as much as possible to take you up on a few things you were you were actually said square pegs in round holes yeah. did you know that even the maritime sector uh, has been bedeviled in recent years at least since at least since we know with corruption for sure, example, sure, sure. Uh, you, you, you did mention, I think in 2016, uh, the country lost close to one trillion naira uh, to the Nigerian Ports Authority. Uh, that's by the Nigerian Ports Authority to corruption. Uh, this same Hadiza, for example, that you've spoken about, um, has brought up the open budget system to NPA, which was not there before. Uh, this is also an NPA right now that is declaring billions of Naira as revenue. More billions of Naira as revenue. While infrastructure is suffering. MPA is not supposed to be making, talking in the Massa MPA. We shouldn't be talking about declaring profit. They are supposed to be facilitate, they are supposed to facilitate to provide infrastructure. Do you understand what I'm saying? We are supposed to provide, will the MD of MPA be proud to take any visitor, any international visitor to any of the ports you can't because it's a shame. And that's why we are saying that, look, the situation in Apapa Tenkan was not as bad as this. But because we now gave this function to a team that does not appreciate history, because you need to have history at the back of your mind. And these are fantastic, eloquent, she has the charm, she can convince any international audience about where she's going to. But administration is not just about this. I experience is key. Experience. Now, I, I want to ask you what yes. exactly is the problem with... What, why do you think, for example, that a, a Papa Pot, that gridlock is still there? I was actually surprised as a Nigerian that <coughs> during the election, during the campaigns, that the president went to Lagos and all those trailers and the trucks disappeared. 
we didn't I couldn't comprehend it though. Yes, yes. And this this is the same place, the same area in Lagos that I've said here times without number. I think just before I went on leave last year that I was talking about in my commodity segment and all of that, that our cocoa was rotting on in that a papa gridlock, yeah. what billions of naira that we needed to get these trucks out of the way, working. And the president was in Lagos, and all those things disappeared. And when the president left Lagos to come back to Abia, I, I, I don't know, for those of you that, can you explain what exactly? This is what we are just saying, the, the, the lack of capacity. We, in, NPA has been blessed, you know, when we talk about Competent, competent managers. We, are, we had one, uh, uh, Omar Suleiman, uh, he's uh, not in service anymore, but he was a managing director. We had the likes of uh, Ibrahim Gwandu. We had the likes of Sarumi. These are core people who were born as if they were born inside the post. And then, of course, don't, for, don't forget uh, Alaji Bamanga Tuko. In those days, during the cement Amanda, Bamanga Tuko would sleep in the post to make sure that things are fixed to make sure things are fixed. But we have a management right now that is so far from this. No, is, is, it, is it about management now, the political? No, it, it, we, 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 which, which is what? You, both. You've not answered. Both. I'm not getting answers from what we say because why did those, why did those trucks just suddenly disappear? That is what we are saying. Window dressing. We have, if you put the right caliber of people, to run the ports. This great luck you are seeing <coughs> will not even be there. In the first place, why would every truck be, be mm -hmm. when it will take you a week or two to pick your consignment? Why would you be on the thing? And then you also not rule out the, 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 the Lagos state government. If these trucks are tracked and you say, look, you are going to be on this queue for about 24 hours or say 12 hours. After that, we begin to pay a surcharge of maybe 2,000 or 5,000 a day. There's a way these things are done. And like the, uh, the National Association of Road Transport Owners said recently, they said, it is the corruption in the system that is fueling what we have at the ports today. Because they have done everything human possible even the tax force that it comprises the <laughs> Navy and the, the, the Army, they are not even helping because it is a new form of extortion. Those who beat the lines or they beat the queues to cause those big logs pay between 20, 30,000 Naira to beat the lines and that is the cost. So when we can simply have truck terminals where you will be called upon, yes, it's your turn, you go and take your commodity. You go and take your cargo, or you go and. And there's a 48 hours cargo clearance, isn't for it? For we, 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 it doesn't work. It's not working. It's not working. So we have made some mistakes in the past four years or so. I think that the, the incumbent on the president this time around, when you are picking your team, get the right people. We have enough professionals. Is in the, the APC. We have the right caliber of people to do these things. For instance, now, look at um, um, in the case of Nimasa. Now, we have a situation where the Dakuku led management has said, look, these waivers that we used to put because the, 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 the uh, cabotage uh, 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 law gave Nigerians who have vessels the prerogative to operate within our own territorial waters. But there used to be abuse of these waivers to foreign ship owners. When they come, they will pay some waivers. And so, so, but now Dakoku has said all that will also stop. But plead with him to make sure he does before, his, uh, before he leaves office, is to make sure that the vessel, cabotage vessel finance fund is implemented so that ship owners can begin to uh, build capacity. Because right now, uh, most of our ship owners can't even go to the banks. The, bank are, the banks are not even helping matters because in Nigeria, it's, uh, <laughs> it's like a cash and carry. Nobody is ready to give long-term loans to ship owners because of the risks involved. What, 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 why, why do you think now, coming to the shipping thing, 
Uh, most analysts will say that Nigeria is missing in the global maritime space uh, because there is an absence of Nigerian uh, shipping uh, company, isn't it? Actually, we are not missing because if you look at the West and Central Africa sub region, mm. we, are, we, we, still, we still remain the hub. Yeah, because most of the cargoes originating, I mean, destined for West and mm. Central Africa sub region, still Nigeria is the destination. Yeah. 65, 75, about 75 percent. So, but what we are saying is that this ease of doing business must not be on paper, it must be on practical terms. And that is means that if I'm, a, I'm a, 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 an importer or a ship owner or a clearing agent, from the comfort of my home, I must, I can sit and clear my goods. Because the problem is this physical contact, contact, even at the level of the Nigerian Customs Service, even at the level of the clearing agents. The average Nigerian licensed custom agents will never make a true declaration. This, that's the problem we have. Uh, aren't they you just generalizing? No, no, the average. No, 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 I'm not. You see, because if you look at the activities of the customs, the customs have now introduced so many layers. We have what we call the strike force. We have now what we call the federal operations unit. We have, uh, we have what we call the CIU. All these agencies shouldn't be, all these bodies shouldn't be there if uh, uh, importers are making a proper declaration. You need to go to, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Ikeja and see the fair warehouse at uh, FOU, Ikeja trucks and all manner of cars because people don't want to make the right declaration and the uh, Amid Ali says if you breach the law we will seize and so they are seizing there's even no space if you go to Ikeja along uh, Mobilaji Bank Antony the warehouse is filled outside is filled because of these in, in infractions by by importers and their agents so we need to work on so many things. And the only way we can achieve that is if all of us come on one page. That's what we call the single window. So that mm. from the comfort of your home, you can make your payment. You can clear your goods without necessarily seeing an official in the MASA or MPA or the Nigerian Customs Service. And so, but most importantly, there's a bill. Because there are three very important bills that the president has not assented to that will turn things around in this country. The Transport Commission bill, the, uh, the, the, the PIGB bill, and of course, the electoral. So this three, this, so the, the, we have a Transport Commission bill inside these three key bills that Mr. President should assent to. If we don't do that, all we are just doing is wasting our time. Mm. What, what would you say, because some other people have also said that Government policies are inhibiting the growth of the sector. Are you in line with, with what uh, that school of thought? You know, I started by saying, mm. uh, talking about policy some assault. Mm. Posi policy some assault. For instance, we have the ports concession some 12, 15 years or so ago. But the MPA, we are supposed to supervise the concessionaires. It's not doing enough and so a shipping company can wake up one money and put some outrageous charges this is demorage this is container deposit and at the end of the day this thing ends up for you and i to pay for instance if you want to to transfer a container from a papa so even as close as Victoria Island in Lagos, we are not talking about Kano or Portacot. We are talking about 1.4 million naira. Whereas this thing should not be more than 200,000, 150,000 in the past four or five years ago. So all these are things that we need to work on to make sure that our ports are not just uh, secure because we also have the challenge of the um, uh, Gulf of Guinea. Mm. Uh -huh. So most of the freight charges, most of the insurance charges, when they are goods destined for Nigeria, it skyrocketed. And so we need to do a lot more. And so now I came up with an idea sometime last year. Look at this. Deep sea ports as Nigeria's gold mine. Okay, the deep sea ports. Yes. <laughs> so, so what we are saying is that why must all of us take our cargo to Lagos. Akwai Bansi government is doing so well, it's investing.
in the Bacadicti port. Cross River is working on uh, uh, um, uh, the Bacas, I mean, uh, the Bacasi, Akwaibo, is Iba. So then, Bayasa is working on Age Dixie port. So what we are saying is that all we need to do, the federal the government needs to do, is to support these very state governments that are investing so much on the deep sea port project because that's what will save the madness in Lagos. So that why 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 must everybody even for goods destined for the east you will first bring them to Lagos where you can take delivery of those goods in Aqu in a Aquai bomb or on airport or port. So you think Oriental. you you think it's because of the underdevelopment that that's why we're seeing that high concentration. That's underdevelopment in other. Uh, uh, a seaport. That's why we're seeing that high concentration in Lagos. In Lagos, in Lagos, because we need to open up the other, other ports, ports. ports. And Calabar for me is not an option because Calabar is like a political port. And so we need to spend the money spent annually in, in dredging port in, in Calabar. Calabar. Port. Doesn't make any, I'm telling you. Because, for instance, it's it's a, it's another drain pipe. Every year you will hear about the Calabar port dredging contract and so, and you ask, how much does, how much is the revenue derived from that port to take the cost of? Because we are talking about billions of dollars each time we are talking about dredging of Calabar port. It's billions of dollars, and so that's why we the, the world over people are now going for. Like Lekki Deep Sea Port, you don't need to dredge. The same thing with the one in Akwai Bomb, mm. You Ibom, don't need to. Yeah. These are natural deep sea ports. And so we should encourage these very state governments to, 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 to diversify. Because there's so much in the maritime industry. So much, so much. So now, much. Just, just before we go on, let's see if we can uh, take a few comments. That's, uh, for those of you watching, you can send your comments or your questions uh, for uh, Mr. Bex. Uh, just before we go, one last question. With all these challenges and with the potentials that we can see, you know, they say Nigeria is a potential, is always potential, <laughs> potential, <laughs> potential, potential. Mm. Do you consider Nigeria a maritime nation? Yes, we are. Are we still a maritime nation with all this, where you see that? I, d I don't think there's any shipping company in Nigeria that plays in the global arena. Is there? Uh, when you say... Is there? So, would you no, say no, no, we no, are... No, we, we are. We are by virtue of the fact that we are also a, a key member in the IMO, International Maritime, Maritime Organization. Organization. Mm -hmm. And of course, don't forget that uh, our own, dear Dakuku Peter side, is the share of the African Maritime Administrations. Yes, in fact, he got it elected second again, time. Uh -huh. Yes, even uh -huh. with all of that, it's just like saying that Nigeria is part of World Trade Organization. It's just like saying that Nigeria is part of all these international organizations. But are we getting full benefits? That's what I'm trying to say. No, Do we no, play not in the Committee all. of not Nations? That's all. what I'm trying to say. Uh, no, yes, the right <coughs> word actually is are we competitive? That's it. We are not. Of so course, are also not competitive. They are not. We are not. We are not. And then when you talk about the, the, the potentials, how much is the maritime sector? How much do we add to the GDP? For now, it's, uh, it's in the region of 1% or thereabouts. And there is that potential of making so much money daily. Yes. Because like I said at the beginning, we lose, I think, about 20 billion naira. On that's weekly economic loss because of all these uh, uh, hiccups here and there. Sure. So we have that potential to be, you know, to get more uh, competitive in our maritime sector. Yeah. All right, I think we'll leave it at that. Uh, let's see uh, if we can, okay, we've almost come to the end of the show, actually. <laughs> 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 so I want to say many thanks for joining me. Thank you very much. On Thank today's you edition. Thank you very much. And uh, you are great, doing a great job here. Mm -hmm. Keep it up. Thank you. And uh, you know, as media people, will continue to say the truth. Yes. Remember the pastor at um, uh, the, the Reverend Gentleman, at, uh, at the Conde Catholic, Atura, Atura, no, yes, he said, look, the he, said the, yes. he said the media, we have yes, a responsibility yes. to continue to say the truth. Yes.